So today I'm at GF Machining Solutions and I'm going to be talking about SparkTrack. What does it do? It helps you use less of this. So SparkTrack port, remember, is a digital roadmap. Uh, a digital roadmap for what it is the technology database and looking after what is the Spark environment. Okay, um, there's two modules that we're going to discuss in the next few minutes. What's the main purpose of these modules though? So the two modules, one incorporates what is the intelligent Spark protection system and that is to monitor in real time what is actually happening during the Spark process, adapting to the cut environment and creating safety for the process. So that's protecting the wire. Protecting the wire. iWire is all about them working in conjunction with SparkTrack and ISPS and saving the customer wire consumption during his production. So let's actually have a look at the part here then, Mark, and what you're actually uh, cutting out because and explain why you're using this as a demonstration. Yeah, so we're using this as a demonstration because really even the logo of ISPS can show us what are very varying cut heights, very poor flushing condition, i.e. we're only taking a two mil slither and we're slicing straight through that section with one technology database. And of course you can see you're then cutting to various heights uh, there's, 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 there's a lot freer areas of cutting and also a lot more intense yeah, areas Yeah, so it's a cutting. prime example of really what is showing the spark protection, but also what is the iWire function, how we can save wire during the process. Okay, let's, let's see it on the screen then. So on the screen itself, all the customer will do is just select from the technology database ISPS. That's all he has to do. He doesn't have to adapt anything or change anything. He just selects what is ISPS as the platform. What the customer is able to do then during the actual Spark process is able to actually see in real time, digitally in effect, what's happening with the Spark condition. So here we can see the... Uh, so the is this spark. the height of the component, this zero the to height. 53? Height of the component at the moment. We can see that it's so far off the table and then this is the maximum height. And what we see at the moment is a slicing through the eye inside ISPS and now we come into an open area where we're only sparking top and bottom. Okay, so we're not sparking in between here in the wire, which, no. is, which is protecting the wire, but exactly. also saving the wire. Exactly. So what the machine is doing at this point is in effect changing the frequency of the spark to the, to the, uh, uh, to the part in real time, but also now seeing I can reduce wire speed at this point, or I need to increase wire speed at this point. Now what's happening on the screen to the right where you've got the profile, is this now actually showing you the finished part? Yeah, so this is quite a clever platform really, but because we're actually monitoring and actually looking at the voltage of the spark, we're able in effect to sort of digitally map out what is an image of the section that we're physically cutting through. Yeah. So on the left hand side, you see the adaption of the spark impulse, and on the right hand side, you can now digitally see what is a section of the part you're cutting through. And what will happen in a, in a few minutes time, or 30 minutes time, probably that will say ISPS. It, it will say ISPS, because that's what you physically see. Right, now let's go back to the machine then, because um, it, p potentially explain or show us, or tell us how much saving you are making using ISPS not just ISPS, but the iWire in conjunction with it. So the whole idea of the uh, ISPS and, as I said, the iWire uh, roadmap is that we're protecting the spark during very difficult cut environments. In most applications, the customer is not cutting standard. He's always got tooling, keeps the workpiece away. He's got clamps in the way, which is keeping the top head away. The whole idea of the ISPS, I'll adapt to that environment for you. And then iWire, obviously, increasing wire speed or reducing wire speed during the cut profile. Right, so what's the advantage to slowing the wire down then if, if you're looking to cut less? So the whole idea of us reducing the wire speed is in effect what we're doing, we're saving a consumable cost to the customer, up to 40% on some of the benchmarks that we've done at the moment. And it means to say really, for the same production time, you are saving up to 40% of your wire consumable. Okay, can we lift the lid on this and have a look at the, the wire because um, I mean, how much wire is on a spool like that? Well, depending on the size of the spool, but typically an eight kilogram spool of wire, you'll have something like 19,000 meters of wire. And if we look at 0.25 wire as a, di uh, as a diameter, okay? Now, if you can imagine that those 19,000 meters of wire are used as a consumable, once they're used, they're spent. 
Okay? If we can save the customer a cost on that, then we're saving him also cost on production. Okay, so how much would you be saving incorporating these modules from SparkTrack on wire with this application? So with this application here, over a 27 minute cut time, we saved 115 meters of wire. So if you wow. relate that to an hour, so that's uh, you know, 230 meters of wire every hour that we're saving just on this production part. Wow, if you then multiply that over multiply hours Multiply that days, by eight hours, multiply that by five days, you're and, saving and a big no consumer. no compromise in the surface finish, the cut no, quality? No, absolutely not, absolutely not. Right, okay. And, 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 and why is that? Why is there no compromise in those areas? Be because wire speed really isn't a detriment to surface finish. Okay, wire speed really is used generally in wire EDM to help clear debris away from the cut environment and always ensure that you're replenishing with new wire, let's say, for the spark process. And, and how about things like taper cuts and stuff like that? Absolutely. Would this work in conjunction with those? Absolutely, Paul. Taper cutting is uh, really the best environment for what is ISPS and iWire because obviously the heads are away, they're inclined from each other. Once you take the slug out, it now becomes an open aperture, poor flushing, absolutely perfect for what is the mold environment, large taper cutting environment. Okay, now if you can just move, position yourself to here, Mark, we want to now look at this particular application because this is a perfect example of where both these modules have really come into yeah. play. Could you explain? Yeah, so typically this is a, a, a mold tool insert from a, from a customer. And uh, typically you can see that in a normal day environment, he would have cutouts in the back of the part. Oh, maybe I should use a pen. Yeah. Uh, he would have cutouts in the back of the part to take an insert. There'd be lots of level changes between each cavity. Normally it's on a rail system, so it's away from the bottom head. Clamps are in the way, the top head is away. Okay. So if we look at this environment here, uh, we did a test using ISPS. And in effect, it took uh, what was 11 hours to create this uh, mold tool uh, down to a service finish of 0.8 RA. We then worked in conjunction then with the iWire with ISPS. And from originally using what was 7,200 meters of wire in those 11 hours, we now used 5,000 meters of wire in those 11 wow. hours. Okay. Explain some of the areas where these modules have have worked and why that there are benefits. So talk about the protection of the wire, okay. how and why, and also then. So typically, uh, if we look at this face here, okay, uh, this would be probably your technology height that you would select. The machine would be cutting through in effect this section, and then all of a sudden would see a change in height in the material. Okay, that's where we need the spark protection. That's where we need the spark to adapt. That's where you could get a wire breakage. Exactly, in. yeah. And that's where we need ISPS to adapt to that environment and protect the spark. Now, at the same time, the wire speed we used here, we now can use less wire speed here because it's thinner material. We don't need it to travel so fast. And we're only looking at, if we reposition to the machine there, Mark, we're only looking there at a relatively small part, aren't we, if you want to take a... Yep. You're only looking at a relatively small part. I assume the, the bigger the block, the bigger the tool, then the more savings there are in these areas. Absolutely. And not just the savings, the more opportunities to protect what you see there as the wire. No, absolutely, Paul. And if you look at today's market where customers are lights out machining, automation as a solution, you can imagine now we can get more throughput of work in the 24-hour shift, but also now a bigger cost saving on, on, a, on quite a big consumable item. And if a wire breaks, it's not just the cost of the wire, it's the time it takes it's to the re-thread, yeah. Yeah, reposition. It's the time, yeah, it's the time it takes. You know, okay, m machines are quite fast these days, but if you look, we have a spark to spark time, and what we like to, what we have to do is switch off the generator, prepare the wire, re-thread the wire, switch back on the generator. Now, that might only equate to 26 seconds, but if you look at uh, multi-cavities, 500 cavities inside a block, it, if you can imagine having one wire break per cavity on there, that does equate to a, quite a lot of time. So to summarize, Spark Track, we're talking about using uh, less wire, protecting the wire, and making real-time changes for savings. Absolutely, and a, and a big cost saving to the production environment.